Hi guys, it's Faye and welcome back to the channel. So, as promised, I'm moving to Wednesdays because it fits better around my schedule and as it's Preptober and I'm already late to Preptober, we're going to talk about outlining and specifically three different ways you can outline. Now, classically, I say classically, there is about three different ways that people work. You have your pantsers, your plantsers and your plotters. So here are three different ways to match those three different writing styles. Firstly, you can pants it. Do what you want. Do what works for you. Make it up as you go along. Not like that is what writing is anyway. Just do what you feel like. If that means just having an idea and rolling with it, do that. If that works for you, do that. I would probably... <laughs> As not a pantser, I find that the bare minimum would be to have a beginning, a middle and an end point. You don't need more than, I'm going to start with X character um, in the middle of the story. X character is going to discover um, magic. And by the end of the story, X character is like fully magic and is now a badass like that is all you need in my opinion if you want to pants it pants it personally i will not be panting it but <laughs> that is a way to outline do what works best for you not what other people tell you should work best for you So, second method, I would say is more for people like myself, who are planters. So, we like to have an outline, but not too much of an outline, otherwise I get bored of the story before I've even written it. Many, many a story has died this way, from overplotting. <laughs> That's how I write. So, recently, very recently, <laughs> I have read Save the Cat writes a novel. Now, Save the Cat was a premise originally written for screenwriters. So these beats that they call them, you'll see them in TV, film, books, they're everywhere. It's basically a guide on what you need to hit to make your story move along. So it's pretty helpful. I would recommend the book because it has got examples in there and it goes into more detail than I am going to go into because it's not my book. <laughs> so the safer cat beats are based on the three act structure, which even I think if you're pantsing, you will tend to fall on the three act structure whether you mean to or not but in each act it gives you several beats to hit in the acts um, it will recommend a percentage of the story that will cover that beat some of them are single beat some of them are multiple beats for example in act two there's a beat called fun and games that is quite a big beat it's like the build up after the initial move from Act 1 to Act 2. Fun and Game B is your build up to the midpoint. Very important. So, beats, working off of beats, I have found more helpful as a planter because you can kind of outline your beats, but it doesn't need to be super specific. You can kind of gauge it as you get there if that makes sense again 
I make sure that I have a solid beginning, middle and end and then you know kind of go from there. Saying that I do write scene cards but I also rewrite scene cards and rewrite scene cards and rewrite scene cards so <laughs> it depends where I am in the story, it depends how I'm feeling in a sense, it will depend on what happens during the beats. So I found that working with beats really helpful as someone who doesn't want to be so set before I start writing but can't just go with the flow. <laughs> so thirdly and finally for my plotters out there if you haven't seen it already I'm shocked <laughs> but here on YouTube there is a YouTuber called Catatastic Apologies if I'm saying that wrong. She created a three act, nine block, 27 chapter outlining process. Now, this is very specific because not only does she go into details of obviously the three act structure, like I said, it would come up quite a lot, but you've then got a specific amount of chapters per block and per book. So she does go into detail in the video about if you want X amount of words, that's X amount of words per chapter roughly. So if you're someone who prefers working to a point, basically you like to know exactly what you need to write, when you need to write it, this is fantastic for you. And I will put that link in the description below for you to go watch that video definitely recommend it. I personally tried it when I first started writing seriously um, and plotting out my stories and I found it personally too restrictive for me because I felt like if I swayed from it slightly then I kind of had to redo all of the plotting which is just personal for me. I know that I've watched some of Petitastic's um, writing vlogs and she finds it helpful to really plot her novel because she doesn't write in chronological order which upsets me deeply but whatever works for you so because she has that plot she can write scenes where she feels like it and then in editing so it all together nicely so if that's how you write do it I think concluding this quick video there's no correct way to do it you know there are gonna be people who say I do it this way and if you don't do it this way then you're doing it wrong um, they're wrong firstly there's no correct way to do it you do what is best for you if that means you write from the end to the beginning do it if you write the odd scene here and there and then put it together into a story, do it. If you <laughs> want to just go with the flow and see what comes out, do it. If you want to plot every single sentence before you write it, do it. Whatever works best for you is what works best. There's no correct way of doing it. And you'll definitely find that when it comes to Nano, if you are joining Nano this year, what works best for you isn't going to work best for everyone else. So, happy writing guys and I will see you next time. Bye.